497 miles, 75,000 pounds, one charge. Tesla Semi just proved every diesel defender wrong with real numbers, not promises. Over 300 trucks are already running daily routes for Walmart, PepsiCo, and DHL, averaging 1.55 kilowatt hours per mile while climbing 7,200 foot mountain passes. This isn't testing anymore. Tesla's Nevada factory is targeting 50,000 units in 2026, priced at $200,000 for the long range version. So here's what changes everything. Can the diesel industry survive when electric now matches range, beats efficiency, and cuts operating costs? Let's talk about why diesel manufacturers are suddenly panicking. For years, they dismissed Tesla Semi as vaporware. The prototype looked cool but couldn't scale, they said. The range claims were impossible, they insisted. And then Tesla did something brilliant. They went completely silent. No flashy announcements, no Musk tweets, no hype. Just thousands of miles of real-world testing that nobody was paying attention to. Until now. The Tesla Semi rolling out in 2026 looks nothing like the 2017 prototype. Program manager Dan Priestley confirmed they've rebuilt nearly everything. The front end now features a horizontal LED light bar matching Cybertruck's design. The windshield shrank because less glass means less weight and better aerodynamics. The roof line got smoothed, the bumper simplified for easier repairs. These aren't cosmetic tweaks. Every modification serves one purpose, pushing that drag coefficient lower. The original semi hit 0.36, incredible for a class eight truck when diesel rigs sit at 0.65 to 0.70. Gen two targets 0.33 or lower. Here's why that matters. Dropping drag by just 0.02 reduces energy consumption by 5 to 7%, adding dozens of miles per charge. That difference separates viable electric trucking from expensive experiments. But there's something wilder happening. Tesla tested aerodynamically optimized side panels with powered electric doors, similar to Model X. Critics immediately called it impractical for a work truck. Yet preliminary data shows genuine potential, improved airflow, obstacle detection, automatic sealing preventing air leaks. Would you trust electric doors on an 80,000 pound freight hauler, making dozens of stops daily? Or is this over-engineering? That answer might determine whether this feature survives to production. Gen 2 runs on 4,680 cells, Tesla's tabless battery architecture. The long-range version packs roughly 850 kilowatt-hours with energy consumption hitting 1.5 to 1.7 kilowatt-hours per mile. Compare that to Freightliner E-Cascadia, averaging over 2 kilowatt-hours per mile. This isn't marginal improvement. This is the difference between profitable operations and financial bleeding. The 4680's tableless design reduces internal resistance, stabilizes power output during sustained high-load operation, and when structurally integrated into the chassis, increases rigidity and lowers the center of gravity, critical for stability in crosswinds. Here's where it gets complicated. A fully loaded semi at highway speeds generates massive heat. Continuous high current discharge on long uphill grades pushes these batteries to their limits. Tesla redesigned the entire thermal management system with advanced liquid cooling because one thermal failure could reduce performance or accelerate degradation, traditional diesel trucks have a century of reliability data. Tesla has a few hundred units running for less than three years. The honest question fleet operators are asking, is this battery system truly ready for 500,000 plus mile life cycles? Or are early adopters about to become expensive beta testers? That question got answered three weeks ago when ABF Freight released results that changed everything. Their trial covered 4,494 miles, averaging 321 miles per day, with energy consumption hitting 1.55 kilowatt hours per mile, significantly below Tesla's own two kilowatt hour estimate. The route included Donner Pass, 7,200 feet elevation, with steep grades that destroy EV range claims. The semi handled it while carrying full freight loads. PepsiCo reported similar numbers. DHL confirmed the data. At the 2023 Run on Less event, 
One Tesla Semi covered over 1,000 miles in a single day, while competitors averaged only a few hundred miles daily. This is where theory collides with reality. The question isn't, can electric trucks work anymore? It's why would any fleet operator choose diesel when operating costs favor electric? Fuel savings alone could reach $200,000 plus over the truck's lifetime. Maintenance costs drop dramatically. No oil changes, no transmission repairs, fewer brake replacements thanks to regenerative braking. The math looks compelling until you hit the infrastructure problem. Tesla claims 1.2 megawatt DC fast charging, recovering 70% battery capacity in 30 minutes. But here's the reality. A 1.2 megawatt charger requires massive electrical infrastructure most truck stops don't have. Installing it costs hundreds of thousands per location. Tesla's building their own mega charger network, but Dan Priestley hasn't provided critical details. How many locations? Where exactly? How fast they're deploying? If Tesla launches 50,000 trucks in 2026, but only has 50 charging locations operational, you've got a logistics nightmare. What makes this interesting is Tesla's licensing mega charger technology so third parties can install them. Truck stops see the business opportunity, electric trucks need to charge somewhere, and whoever controls that infrastructure controls fleet routing. This could trigger a charging arms race. But it also creates dependency. If charging stations don't materialize fast enough, Tesla semi adoption stalls regardless of vehicle performance. Is Tesla betting on infrastructure catching up? Or do they know something about rollout plans they haven't announced? Meanwhile, Tesla's Nevada semi-factory went from empty desert to nearly complete in months. Recent drone footage shows exterior construction finished with heavy equipment delivering production machinery. Dan Priestley said production would ramp throughout 2026, implying manufacturing already started. Tesla's targeting 50,000 units annually, near Peterbilt's output levels. Tesla has never mass-produced a Class 8 truck, yet they're building capacity to match legacy manufacturers who've done this for decades. Here's what doesn't add up. Tesla's been building semis in tiny numbers since 2017. Why wait until now to scale? The official answer is they needed real-world data. The real answer is more revealing. Until recently, Tesla couldn't produce enough 4680 cells. Battery supply was the bottleneck. Now that Texas Gigafactory is ramping 4680 production, Semi suddenly becomes viable. That timing isn't coincidence. Tesla's been planning this exact moment for years, waiting until every piece aligned. The pricing reveals Tesla's thinking. The 500-mile version costs around $200,000 versus $150,000 to $180,000 for diesel tractors. But total cost of ownership flips that calculation. Factor in fuel savings, $200,000 plus, reduced maintenance, $100,000 plus, carbon credits and federal incentives, and the semi becomes cheaper within three to four years. There's also a 300-mile version planned at $150,000 using LFP batteries, making it lighter with increased payload capacity, but LFP batteries face tariff issues from China. Tesla's building domestic LFP production in Nevada but it's focused on energy storage, not vehicles yet. So the $150,000 version might be delayed, forcing early adopters toward the premium model. Then there's full self-driving. Gen 2 includes FSD-ready hardware from day one, cameras above wheel arches, dedicated cooling for computers, standardized hardware for fleet updates. Tesla's building an autonomous ready truck before the software exists. Musk's endgame, Fully autonomous trucks operating 24-7. If achieved, this obliterates the current business model. An autonomous semi could run continuously, stopping only for charging. No driver wages, no hours of service limits, no fatigue accidents. A single truck doing the work of three drivers around the clock. But let's be honest. FSD on an 80,000-pound vehicle is terrifying. The mass demands perfect algorithms with zero error margin. One mistake isn't a fender bender, it's catastrophic. Regulatory approval will take years, possibly decades. Supervised FSD assisting drivers might launch sooner, still creating real value. Yet every fleet operator is asking, is Tesla overselling FSD's timeline again, or deliberately building hardware now knowing software needs five to 10 years to mature? 
This explains why Musk stayed silent for years. Every truck was a prototype collecting data, not a finished product. They lacked manufacturing capacity, and critically, Semi without FSD was just an electric truck. With FSD, it becomes a revolution eliminating the largest expense, labor. That silence was strategic patience. Tesla waited until Gen 2 finalized, factory progressed, battery supply secured, and FSD hardware ready. Now they're making noise because they're actually ready. This isn't vaporware. This is coordinated launch backed by infrastructure and technology that didn't exist three years ago. Here's your answer. Diesel ends not because electric is cleaner, but because it's cheaper. When Tesla Semi cost $200,000 less to operate over its lifetime while matching range and payload, the business case for diesel collapses. Fleet operators buy based on spreadsheets, and the spreadsheets just flipped. 2026 isn't just one truck. It's the factory hitting 50,000 units, mega chargers expanding nationwide, FSD ready hardware. Tesla waited years building the complete ecosystem. Now every piece moves simultaneously. What determines transition speed? Infrastructure, battery production, fleet willingness? Drop your take in the comments. If this analysis added value, hit that like button. Subscribe to Tesla Zone for detailed 2026 production coverage. Turn on notifications for major developments. We track every factory update, charging deployment, fleet adoption. This is Tesla Zone, real data behind Tesla's revolution. Diesel isn't ending with protests. It's ending because the math changed. Tesla just leaked documents showing the Model 2 could hit dealerships at $25,000 before incentives. Multiple Fremont sources confirm Elon signed off on three radical changes that slashed production costs by 40% while somehow beating gas cars on total ownership expense. Is this the move that finally kills the used Camry market? Or are we about to see the biggest manufacturing risk Tesla's ever taken? Because what's happening inside Gigafactory Texas right now isn't just about building a cheaper EV. It's about rewriting what Americans expect from a $25,000 car. Here's what nobody's talking about. Tesla's Shanghai suppliers just shifted ceramic electrolyte film production schedules by eight weeks. Japanese partners are ramping up solid-state separator materials, and insiders at Fremont say the Model 2 pack won't be traditional lithium-ion. It's a semi-solid hybrid configuration targeting 44 to 52 kilowatt hours depending on trim. This isn't speculation. This is supply chain movement with real money behind it. The numbers tell a different story than what you're hearing elsewhere. Current Model 3 LFP packs deliver around 160 to 170 watt hours per kilogram. The Model 2's semi-solid design could push that to 220 to 245 watt hours per kilogram. That's a 120 to 160 pound weight reduction while keeping the same usable energy. For a car expected to weigh under 3,000 pounds, cutting 150 pounds of battery mass changes physics. Acceleration improves, handling tightens, efficiency climbs without adding a single horsepower. But here's where it gets controversial. With a drag coefficient between 0.23 to 0.25 in smaller frontal area than Model 3, even a 48 kilowatt hour semi-solid pack could deliver 275 to 310 miles EPA rated. Real world highway driving at 65 miles per hour? you're still looking at 230 to 250 miles. That finally makes a budget Tesla viable for people without home charging who need to drive I-95 or I-10 regularly. The charging advantage might be even bigger. Solid state materials don't swell like liquid electrolytes under heat stress. Early modeling suggests the Model 2 could accept 210 to 240 kilowatts on V3 superchargers. Once V4 stations roll out nationwide, peak charging could hit